Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, November 1st, 2020. I'm your lay reader, Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found at the link in the description of this video on Facebook and on YouTube, or you can go to our website, www.centralprespb.com, click on the publications link at the top of the webpage, scroll down till you see today's date, uh, click on that link and that will give you the PDF and, and feel free to print that so you can follow along with today's service. Um, now that you've downloaded the bulletin for today's service, I ask that you turn your attention to the announcements found at the back of the bulletin. Uh, let's see. Neighbor to Neighbor has asked for a donation of 50 cans of cranberry sauce by November 23rd for Christmas. Uh, for more information about where to drop them off, you can contact us via social media. Uh, we can also put you in contact with uh, several church members who will be willing to pick up cans uh, and deliver them for you uh, to neighbor to neighbor. It is stewardship season. Uh, look for your pledge cards via uh, postal mail in the next few weeks. As a thank you, we'll be taking reservations to pick up a chicken and dressing dinner prepared by the Von Tunglins on November 22nd. You can either mail back your pledge cards or drop them off when you pick up your meal. Uh, you can contact via, uh, Susie via uh, phone or CPC via social media to RSVP for your meal. And we ask that you please RSVP um, so Rose and Susie and Brad know how much um, uh, food to prepare. And uh, we thank you for your prompt returning of your pledge cards. Uh, as a general reminder, the general election is uh, this Tuesday. CPC will be again uh, serving as a polling place for our community. Uh, be aware of election rules if you plan on being in or around the building on, on this Tuesday. If you need more information about voting, please head to www.pcusa.org slash vote. The session of CPC has decided to stick with virtual services for the foreseeable future. Keep in contact with us via social media or at our website uh, for announcements on any special services or when we plan to resume in-person worship services. Uh, online uh, services, um, archives of our online services, I apologize, can be found at our Facebook and our YouTube pages. Link to each are on our webpage, www.centralprespb.com. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. In Christ, God was reconciling the world to God's self, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. Our Savior, Christ Jesus, abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Therefore, we offer up our worship through prayer and acts of devotion. Therefore, we offer up our service to God through our service to our neighbor. Therefore, we take up the ongoing work of reconciliation until at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bend and every tongue shall confess him Lord to the glory of God, our Father. <clears throat> Let us approach with a true heart and full insurance of faith with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for the one who has promised is faithful. Now please join me in the prayer of confession found in our bulletin uh, together and then silently. Merciful God, you pardon all who truly repent and turn to you. We humbly confess our sins and ask your mercy. We have not loved you with a pure heart, nor have we loved our neighbor as ourselves. We have not done justice, loved kindness, or walked humbly with you, our God. Have mercy on us, O God, in your loving kindness. In your great compassion, cleanse us from our sin. Create in us a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation, and sustain us with your, uh, with your bountiful spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, and now silently. Amen. 
Amen. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. And now let's turn uh, the, to the uh, children's message by Miss Rose Von Tunglin. Good morning, everyone. How many of you know what today is? Today is All Saints Sunday. Why do you think we have a Sunday called All Saints? Well, this is the day that we remember all the people in our church or in our lives that have passed and have gone to live with Jesus. And we call them saints. Now you're probably wondering, you know, they're just an ordinary person. But an ordinary person can be a saint. They can be a doctor, they could be a lawyer, they could be a school teacher, or they could just be a kid like you who helps other people and does things that God that pleases God. Today there's also a special song that I'd like for you to listen to, and it's called We Sing the Song of the Saints of God. And this kind of helps explain about how ordinary people like me and you are saints of God. So let's listen to the song. Give me just a minute. I'll try to sing along a little bit with it. I bet a lot of you know this song and I've sang it before about this time of the year. I sing the song of the saints of God, patient and brave and true, who told and fallen and found out for the Lord they loved and knew. And one was a doctor and one was a queen, one was a shepherd and song of They were all the saints of God that I knew. God helped me to be one too. Have a good week this week. And remember that you are a saint of God. Amen. Thank you, Miss Rose, for that children's sermon and that uh, wonderful song. We do appreciate it. Um, Unfortunately, this week, uh, Reverend Tim Reeves took a, uh, a little tumble, um, he, and he injured his uh, back. Um, he was very, very sore the last couple of days and has not been able to sleep very much. And uh, Tim has asked me to uh, take the uh, reins and uh, deliver the uh, message this week, uh, which is um, the politics of God. And uh, so I'm, we're going to go ahead and start with uh, today's first scripture reading, which is Joshua 24, uh, verses uh, 1 through 25. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, long ago your ancestors, Terah and his sons, Abraham and Nahor, lived beyond the Euphrates and served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. I gave him Isaac, and to Isaac I gave Jacob and Esau. I gave Esau the hill country of the Seir to possess, but Jacob and his children went down to Egypt. Then I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt with what I did in its midst. And afterwards, I brought you out. When I brought your ancestors out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued your ancestors with the chariots and the horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and made the sea come up upon them and cover them. And your eyes saw what I did to Egypt. Afterwards, you lived in the wilderness for a long time. 
and then I brought you to the land of the Amorites, who lived on the other side of the Jordan. They fought with you, and I handed them over to you. You took possession of their land, and I destroyed them before you. Then King Balak, son of Zippor, Zippor of Moab, set out to fight against Israel. He sent and invited Balaam and son of Baor to curse you, but I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore he blessed you. So I rescued you out of his hand. When you went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, the citizens of Jericho fought against you, and also the Amorites, and the Perizzolites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Gigrashites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I handed them over to you. And I sent the hornet ahead of you, which drove out before you the two kings of the Amorites. It was not by your sword or by your bow. I gave you the land on which you had not labored, and towns that you had not built, and you lived in them. And you eat the fruit of the vineyard and the olive groves that you did not plant. Now therefore revere the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that your ancestors served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. Now, if you are unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. <clears throat> then the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our ancestors up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, and who did those great signs in our sight. He protected us along the way, and that we went in among the peoples through whom we passed, and the Lord drove out all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we will serve the Lord, for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve a foreign God, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, No, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. And he said, Then put away the foreign gods that are among you, and incline your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and he whom we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statues and ordinances for them at Shechem. Today's second scripture reading is Matthew chapter 25, verses 1 through 13. Again, listen for the word of the Lord. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight, there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came along, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore you know neither the day nor the hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. 
Open our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit, so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, and hearing we might believe, and in believing we might live lives richer and fuller in service to you, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So begins the First Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America. It forms the backbone of what we have come to know as the separation of church and state. We are free to exercise our religion openly without governmental oppression or interference. Given the nature of this country at the time of its founding, what this likely meant was that our government could not tell us whether we had to be Roman Catholic or Protestant or to which particular denomination we must belong. As our nation has grown and progressed, so too has our understanding of the First Amendment, so that now it is widely held and believed that our government cannot tell us how we practice our faith, which faith we subscribe to, or even to have faith at all. But one of the erroneous conclusions that many people draw is that the separation of church and state means that politics and religion do not and should not mix. Like oil and water, like night and day, like east and west, some people believe that religion and politics are two separate spheres and should always remain so. To these people, I might say what Gandhi once said, quote, those who say religion has nothing to do with politics do not know what religion is, end quote. Though perhaps a more correct way of saying this would be, those who say religion has nothing to do with politics do not know who God is. I am who I am, said God to Moses when Moses asked what he should say to the people of Israel if they asked him the name of the God who sent him to deliver them. I am who I am. Another way of translating those words is, I will be what I will be. God, in other words, refuses to be defined or limited by us in any way. This is what we mean in part when we profess that God is sovereign. God is not partisan. That is to say that God is neither a Republican nor a Democrat. And any attempt to portray God as such is as much an example of taking the name of the Lord our God in vain as the most vile and blasphemous things we could ever utter. We would all do well to remember that the next time someone else says, or we are tempted to say that God hates this group of people or that group of people, I am who I am, I will be what I will be. I will say it again, God is not partisan. And regardless of how we personally feel about the women and men who currently occupy the seats of power or for whom we will have or, or who we will or have already cast our votes, God is going to feel quite differently. I can say that because God is no respecter of persons. God's expectations are exactly the same, that each of our leaders and each of us live faithful and obedient lives. This goes to the very heart of another, though often overlooked, aspect of God's sovereignty. Not only does God refuse to be defined or limited by us in any way, God also reserves the right to intrude, intervene, and even disrupt our lives and plans in any way God chooses. And if we think that this does not make God political, then we really do not know who God is. God steps in and says, You shall have no other gods before me. No one and no other thing is to take a place of primary importance in our lives. God means that here and now and every moment of our lives, not just when it happens to be convenient for us, not just when we can squeeze God into our busy schedules, not just when doing so does not conflict with our own plans or hopes or dreams. Every time we pray in the words of the Lord's Prayer, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We extend an open invitation for God to come into our day-to-day -day existence and turn our worlds upside down and inside out. We acknowledge that we are more than willing to have everything we hold near and dear thrown aside by God 
if doing so could or would glorify God. In short, we take a real risk that God will say, okay, and that the heavens will open and life as we know it will suddenly and forever come to an end. Scary thought, isn't it? But do you want to know what's an even scarier thought? God doesn't need our invitation to do any of that. God doesn't have to wait for us to say, thy kingdom come, in order to turn everything on its ear. But do you know what the scariest thought of all is? That God would do none of that. That God could just as easily decide not to intervene in our lives or on our behalf. That God could leave us utterly and completely alone. That God would leave us in our own sinful and broken condition. I am who I am. I will be what I will be. Thankfully, God chose not to exercise that scariest of all options. Instead, God chose to remain intimately involved with creation. God covenanted with the unlikeliest of couples and the old and barren Abraham and Sarah and made of their descendants a great nation. God delivered that nation from the bonds of slavery in Egypt. God dwelt with and provided for that nation in the wilderness. God gifted that nation with the law. God led that nation through 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. God fought for that nation as they entered into and took possession of the very land that God had promised to give them. Their year, years, excuse me, their long years of wandering were now at an end, and the people of Israel were about to settle down into a more sedentary existence. And so Joshua addressed the people of Israel reminding them of all that God had so graciously done for them and given to them and calling upon them to consider their own response to God. Generations later, we are reminded that the story did not end there at Sketchum. The word of God would become flesh and dwell among us as a member of that covenantal people. Jesus would live and die not only for that people, but for all people. He would rise from the grave, defeating the power of death, once and for all. He would ascend into heaven and where now he sits enthroned in glory and seating on our behalf, interceding on our behalf. And he will come again to judge the living and the dead. We too are reminded of all that God has so graciously done for us and given to us, and we too are called upon to consider our own response to God. And so it is that we hear Joshua say, now, therefore, revere the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the gods that our ancestors served before the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. Now, if you're unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served in the region beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Choose this day whom you will serve. Would they choose to build that nation and its public life on the new ways, the revolutionary and radical ways of God? Would they, in the words of the prophet Micah, do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with their God? Or would they, or would they build that nation on the ways of the world they had always known and all humanity had always known and accepted? What would Israel do? Would they embrace God and be faithful to the task of building a nation that would recognize God as its king? Would they practice a politics governed by the first commandment to love God with their whole being and the second commandment to love their neighbor as they love themselves? Would they embrace a radical alternative lifestyle that was in opposition to the lifestyles of the rest of the world? Would they live under the authority of God? Or would they choose to be like all the other nations of the earth and become a nation of control, oppression, and exploitation? Regardless of whom we have chosen and whom we will choose in the future to occupy the seats of power, these are the questions that we must answer as well. But in answering them, we must not let our thinking be skewed by our particular political leanings. Many politicians prey on those leanings, tossing out words about faith and religion which fall like music on some people's ears. 
but their actions belial their words. God's politics are never that narrowly defined. God's politics are governed by love. And lest we think that this is some sappy, over-sentimental notion, let us remember that love led our Lord to endure humiliation and death for us. Let us remember that our Lord's love for us does not exclude others from that same love. As Jesus taught, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your Father in heaven, for he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rains on the righteous and unrighteous. For those you love, those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers and sisters, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Be perfect, therefore, as your heavenly Father is perfect. And as the Apostle Paul taught, love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. God is a God of love. Choose this day whom you will serve. This brings us to our reading from Matthew's Gospel. Traditionally, the oil that is alluded to in this parable has been inter interpreted as living a life of love and mercy in obedience of God. That's why the wise say to the foolish that they do not have enough to share. They can, they can no more live a faithful life for someone else than we could. But note that even the foolish start out with oil. The problem is they did not expect a delay. As one commentator notes, all 10 have come to the wedding. All 10 have their lamps aglow with expectation. All 10 presumably have on their bridesmaid gowns. We would never guess from appearances that half are wise and half are foolish. No, it's not the looks, the lamps, or the long dresses that set the wise apart from the foolish. It's the readiness. Five of the bridesmaids are ready for the groom to be delayed, but the other five are not. The wise have enough oil for the wedding to start whenever the groom arrives. The foolish have only enough oil for their own timetable. Five are prepared and ready, even for delay, and five are not. Readiness in Matthew is, of course, living the life of the kingdom, living the quality of life described in the Sermon on the Mount. Many can do this for a short while, but when the kingdom is delayed, the problems arise. Being a peacemaker for a day is not as demanding as being a peacemaker year after year after year, when the hostility breaks out again and again, and the bridegroom is delayed. Being merciful for an evening can be pleasant being merciful for a lifetime when the groom is delayed requires preparedness. As Christians, we are called to live out our lives with these things in mind. We must, we must, as Joshua put it, choose this day. But really, we must choose each moment of our lives whom we will serve. For our Lord is certainly, our, for our Lord will certainly return suddenly but there's no guarantee that our Lord will return immediately. We must live lives of balance, which say in word and deed that we are indeed prepared to meet our Lord now, but which also say that we have the wherewithal to persevere. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now at this time that you would please, stay, uh, please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
and in Jesus Christ, his, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving, excuse me, yes, our thanksgiving through our tithes and our offerings, which again will be taken electronically this week. We invite you to go to www.centralprespb.com. We ask that you uh, click on the Donate Now link found on the upper right-hand corner of the webpage um, and uh, make your online uh, donation there. Uh, if you prefer to uh, mail in your pledge, or not pledge, but your tithe, uh, please address it to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us. For we are most grateful for the gift of your, gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and for your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day when, when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns, uh, which there are several. Um, uh, we were asked to um, continue to hold Brad Von Tunglin, uh, Adam Vick, uh, Scarlett Munn, Anita Rodriguez, Jane Glover, and Elaine Porter uh, in our prayers. Uh, all of them are having, um, uh, except for Miss Porter, I shouldn't, I should not have uh, clumped her in with this group. Um, they are dealing those those that I mentioned besides Miss Porter are um, dealing with uh, medical issues. Uh, we pray that the, um, the doctors and, um, and, and, and their nurses provide good care and that, they, uh, that the Lord provides healing and wisdom to those doctors and nurses to be able to provide that healing for those we mentioned. Um, as I mentioned, Ms. Elaine Porter, who is the stepmother of Dana Neal, um, Dana asked us to keep uh, Ms. Porter in our prayers. Um, we were also asked to keep, um, again, the family of Isaac Patillo, who was a teenager who was uh, recently uh, passed away, um, a very well-known family in the, in the Whitehall community in our prayers as well. I also want to mention, um, I pray that, um, that those who are on the front lines of the COVID-19 pandemic, <clears throat> which seems to be getting worse by the day, um, are protected and 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 and, um, and and covered by God's grace. Uh, we also ask for those who have contracted COVID nineteen for a speedy recovery, and we ask for the Lord to be with those who have lost loved ones uh, to this horrible disease uh, throughout the world. Uh, again, we also ask for reconciliation of this uh, nation uh, to the Lord, and um, as the sermon. Um, so eloqu eloquently put, uh, we ask that uh, God and enter the Lord intercede on our behalf uh, in the coming days <laughs> as we all make very important decisions uh, in reference to the upcoming election. Um, let us pray. <clears throat> Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. We ask that you be with Brad Von Tunglin, Scarlett Munn, Adam Vick, Anita Rodriguez, 
and Jane Glover as they um, deal with medical issues, uh, be it uh, illnesses, uh, future surgeries, uh, recovering from surgeries, and um, and unfortunate diseases that that have afflicted each and each one of these individuals. Uh, we ask that you provide wisdom to the doctors and nurses that they may provide healing and that you provide the wisdom and the and the healing to those people who uh, who provide the uh, the help medical uh, help and uh, provide healing to those who need it. Uh, we also ask that you be with Elaine Porter and the family of Isaac Patillo. We also ask that you be with those who are affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, be it on the front lines, be it with families who have lost loved ones, and be it with those who uh, have contract contracted the disease. Uh, please provide uh, comfort to those who have lost loved ones, protection for those who are in contact with, uh, possible contact with those who have it, and the healing for those who have, who have um, acquired the disease. We also ask for reconciliation of our world to you, Lord, and that we in the coming days make wise decisions that, that are the decisions that you would make for us or that you would have us make that we, what we choose to do your will in this world and in this country. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace, to love and serve the Lord in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit, taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.